Alrighty. Oh dear me. That was one heck of a frightening experience. I'm going to need to figure out a way to stop it happening again. And to do that, I think I need to head up to the studio. Alright. I think I figured it out. I'm going to make a security camera. Now, I know this sounds pretty mundane, but it means I can keep track of if anyone's coming into my garden. And to build it, I'm actually going to be using two distinct cameras. One that handles day vision, and another that handles night vision. Now, if you've ever tried to film a video in the night time on your phone, you've probably seen that results have been pretty bad. Unless, of course, you're using some AI super-powered schizmo. So, to get around this problem, I'm actually going to be using something called a no-IR camera, which is a normal camera, but without an infrared filter. And what this means is the camera sensor can pick up infrared light, which is fantastic for night applications, because then you can illuminate an area with infrared light, and the camera can actually pick that up and show you the scene even without normal visible light. And of course, other people can't see it, which is even better. So, with these two cameras combined, I think I'm going to have a pretty robust system. So, I think I've got some parts to get on order. Okay, so that's all the parts we need. Well, there's one missing. The camera needed a friend. And here's one I bought earlier. Because it was on my drone and took it apart and things. It's a assembler time! Whoa, 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 hang on there, Chief. We can't start the assembly part of this video without showing everyone what parts we're actually using. Let's, let's rewind it a little bit. Okay, cool. So we have the Raspberry Pi Zero with pre-soldered GPIO headers. We have the Arducam Double Plexer Stereo Module, which allows you to connect two cameras to the single CSI port on the Raspberry Pi. Got its ribbon cable, as well as the No IR Camera Module, which is this black one, as well as the standard Raspberry Pi Camera Module. All right. Now you can continue. I'm going to take the camera connector thingamajig and attach it to the Raspberry Pi. This hooks up over the GPIO connectors, which are these pointy things here. Like so. Next thing we need to do is attach this connector to that connector on the Raspberry Pi. So for camera A, which is this top one, I'm going to be using my colour camera. So we've got two cameras connected, but they are kind of like backwards, which is not going to work great for the design that I've got in mind, which they need to look like this. So that's probably going to mean I'm going to have to fold one of these ribbon cables so it sits nicely. Okay, first test of the camera setup. On the left hand side here, I've got my no IR camera pointed at Marty McFly over here. 
and I've got that streaming over Wi-Fi. And look at that. He's right there. Got a bit of a pinkish hue. That's just because of the fact there's no, well, infrared filter on this camera. But I'm just going to toggle over to the other one with just a single command. Like so. And the stream is automatically updated to point at the camera on the right hand side. I think this is going to be viable. Now that testing seems successful, I moved on to creating a small Node.js based utility which automatically switches between the two cameras at sunrise or sunset. The way this works is pretty straightforward. First, it loads up the config file from the file system, which contains the user's current latitude and longitude. This makes sure that any calculations on the sunrise and sunset times are always correct. Next, the utility checks whether the current time on the Raspberry Pi is falling within day or night, and sets the initial camera state accordingly, whether with the color camera or no IR camera. And this is done by sending a I2C command over GPIO headers to the RGCAM doubleplexer component. Then, as the program flow continues, we enter our main loop. This is pretty straightforward. First, the next time an update needs to happen to switch the cameras is computed. And that's done by querying whether sunrise or sunset is coming next based off the current time. Then a delta to that sunrise or sunset time is computed from the current time, and then a wait happens, which could be a few hours. When that wait is done, another command is sent over to our hardware to switch cameras, and then we go back, figure out the next time we need to wait for, and just keep looping around. And that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, Everything wasn't plain sailing. To start with, had some problems with the connections. I've left the camera running overnight and I've just come back to it this morning. And um, it's refusing connections. I can't stream anything, can't connect to it via SSH. Something has gone wrong. So it turns out this was caused by Wi-Fi management being enabled on the Raspberry Pi which meant that after a set period of time without any connections outbound from it, the onboard firmware would scale everything down in terms of power usage. But this meant I couldn't then connect to it later on to restart everything working again. So the solution was just to disable power management. There was also another couple of problems. The initial tests with the switching between the two cameras actually failed when transitioning from daytime to night. Now it turns out this was caused by a bug in my code where I was trying to convert the next time that something was happening, i.e. sunset or sunrise, but failing to account for conversion to milliseconds correctly. This led to my update intervals where everything is waiting, taking a lot longer than they should actually have been. So I fixed that and that started working. Hopefully this is gonna work. About five, four, three, two, one. Oh, yes, it works. <sighs> but then the biggest problem of all reared its head. And that was in the form of not actually being able to see anything at all at nighttime through the no IR camera. I completely forgotten about illuminating the area that I want to look at because you can't see anything if there's no light to pick up. So, to work around this problem, I went and bought a separate no IR camera which actually had built-in LED IR lights attached to it to see how that would perform. All right, it's night time, which means, well, we can test out the night camera. Oh wow, check that out. It's lighting up the entirety of the room Turn the camera around, it's completely pitch black. Unfortunately, even this new camera had its own problem. I couldn't use it in parallel with the colour camera, which is the whole point of this project. When I tried plugging it in to the doubleplexer, 
I found that there's just no video data available for either of the two cameras. So I was almost back to square one. I had a good camera that worked at night time, but couldn't function in parallel with the color camera. But I also had the other no IR camera, which just couldn't work at night time, but could work in parallel. So I had a bit of a think and I realized that I'm not limited just by the existing parts I already have. I could splice things together. Now I knew that the Raspberry Pi Zero was able to output a decent amount of current on its USB port because there's no limiting uh, whatever majiggy between it and your power source. So I took off one of the IR LEDs from this new camera, spliced together a USB cable and soldered them directly to the LED then plugged it into the USB port. And this actually worked, which made me very happy. Okay, so we have hardware all assembled, we have software together, but one thing we are missing is a nice professional finish. And to do that, I designed a case for everything to sit within. And I've designed it so that it can be 3D printed. But I don't have a printer. Well, I do now. This is the Prusa Original Mini Plus, and I've linked the unboxing video to it somewhere around here. Overall, I am pretty happy with how this has come out. It's able to stream in both day and night time, just how I wanted it to. Toggles between the two cameras when it's supposed to. It gives me a fairly good bit of footage as a result. But there are a couple of problems. I'm not too happy with how I've integrated it with HomeKit. You've probably noticed throughout the video I've actually been using my iPad to be a viewfinder for the video output and that's done by streaming all the video over HomeKit. And I, I'm finding that the implementation I've got of that is a bit laggy and I'm seeing some pretty weird artifacting going on when actually viewing the camera stream. I've also been a bit of an idiot and managed to scratch the lens on the no IR camera. And I'd manage this by adjusting the focal length of it, which you can do by twisting one of the components on the front of the lens. So my footage at night time now is pretty blurry. It's not great. But those problems aside, which are kind of outside the scope of the project, I think, I think it's been well worth it. If you want to make this yourself at home, I've included a link to my blog post in the description below, where I detail getting all the software set up on it, as well as which hardware components you need to buy to actually create this. I've also uploaded all the 3D print files that I created when putting all of this together. So if you want a similar case to this, I've got you covered. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and um, yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next project.